Podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com Podcast, looking at cannabis news, stocks to watch, as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. In today's podcast, we look over a few early announcements from Canopy Growth Corporation, trading on the TSX as weed and the New York Stock Exchange as CGC, as well as Aurora Cannabis Incorporated, trading on the TSX and New York Stock Exchange as ACB, Alternate Health Corporation, trading on the CSE as AHG and the OTCQB as AHGIF, and THC Biomed International Limited, trading on the CSC as THC. But first, uh, Governor Doug Burgum has signed a bill into law making North Dakota the 25th state in the nation to eliminate the threat of jail time for possession of small amounts of marijuana. HB 1050 reclassifies possession of up to one half ounce of marijuana by adults 21 and older as an infraction punishable by no jail time and a maximum fine of $1,000. Previously, it was a misdemeanor punishable by up to 30 days in jail in addition to a fine. The bill also reclassifies penalties for possession offenses involving amounts greater than a half ounce, and it calls on the Legislative Assembly to consider studying the implications of the potential adoption of an initiated measure allowing for the use of recreational marijuana. The legislation is far from ideal, but it is a substantial step in the right direction, said Matthew Schweit, Deputy Director of the Marijuana Policy Project. It's very encouraging to see a conservative state like North Dakota acknowledge and rectify the injustice of jailing people for possession of small amounts of marijuana. Lawmakers can no longer ignore public support for marijuana policy reform, which is growing public quickly in every part of the country. Uh, so why is this important? This is another state now that is changing the laws regarding the amounts uh, in possession laws. Uh, recently, it was Texas that just looked over this, and again, more states are changing this on a weekly and monthly basis, so paying attention to the fact that that's happening. Uh, it's definitely coming up as well. After the first year of a unified national industry association and with the framework of cannabis legalization firmly established in the Cannabis Council of Canada, has announced its newly elected board of directors. Uh, so the newly elected board, which represents almost 90% of Canada's legal cannabis industry, and has elected the following individuals to the board. So Megan McCree from Afria. We have John Fowler from the Supreme Cannabis Company. Philip Lucas from Tilray. Darren Koriskiak of Aurora. Allison Gordon of 48 North. Jeff Jacobson of Kronos Group. Jeff Ryan of Canopy Growth. Uh, Ray Gracewood of Organigram. Isabel Robillard of Hexo. Gerard Proctor of Sundial Growers. And Ruth Chan of New Strike and Up. The board members bring a wealth of diverse experience in the following areas, scientific research, marketing and communications, strategy and innovation, market analysis, business development, government relations, policy development, law, and nonprofit. Uh, so why is that important to pay attention to? Obviously, all of those are public companies and all have a different board director on that cannabis council. Uh, so just something to pay attention to for which companies are being involved there and which are the bigger players on that board. So next, looking at Canopy Growth Corporation, who announced today that it signed an off-take agreement with Farmhouse Incorporated, a 49% owned joint venture of Canopy Rivers, trading on the TSX Venture as RIB and the OTC as CNPOF. Under the terms of that agreement, Farmhouse has agreed to allocate high-quality cannabis flour from an additional 20% of the flowering space available at its Learnington Greenhouse facility over the next three years. Uh, boasting a 1.3 million square foot of greenhouse growth space and leveraging the resources of Canopy Growth, Canopy Rivers and its joint venture partner have worked diligently since October 2018 to prepare this facility for licensing. Farmhouse will leverage Canopy Growth's genetics selected and supplied by the company, and flour will be returned to the company to be sold under Canopy Growth's diverse brands and banners. Under the terms of the new offtake agreement, Farmhouse is committed to producing GMP-certified high-quality cannabis flour within 18 months of its cultivation license, and the flour must comply with the company's high standards for cannabis quality. GMP, or Good Manufacturing Practices, certification is the internationally recognized system to ensure all product goods meet the highest consumer health and safety standards, allowing the company to export the flour to international divisions. Including in this new agreement, 30% of farmhouses' total flowering space has been committed to canopy growth. Following that news from canopy, more news related to canopy. 
Uh, as best-selling author and business executive Martha Stewart will speak at the World Cannabis Congress in St. John, New Brunswick, which is held on June 16th to 18th. Uh, Stewart is now an, one of those examples of big brands and high-profile personalities that are now entering into the cannabis space as an outdated stigma gives way to mainstream growth opportunities. I look forward to sharing my knowledge and experience in the lifestyle space with this tailored audience, says Stewart. As I begin to collaborate on products with the CBD market, and as the demand for these types of products grows, I'm very interested in the conversations and connections at this event. Uh, so why is this news important? Martha Stewart recently joined with Canopy Rivers to work on their CBD products for both pets and humans. Uh, so people have been paying attention to that. She's also in there with Snoop Dogg. So those are the two big names attached to Canopy Growth at the moment and also attached to the CBD space. So the fact that she's going to be speaking at the World Cannabis Congress, which is renowned for covering major influences, thought leaders, policymakers, and government officials uh, to help advance the cannabis industry worldwide, I think is an important factor. And as well, the fact that Canopy has now extended its facility and its partnership with Farmhouse and Canopy Rivers, and it's growing uh, and has actually reached its size quota of that 1.3 million square foot of greenhouse space is another big moment for the company. Looking next now at Aurora Cannabis Incorporated, who announced that the company through its wholly owned subsidiary, Aurora Deutschland, has been selected by the Luxembourg Health Ministry and an exclusive supplier in the public bid to supply a second delivery of medical cannabis to Luxembourg. Uh, under the terms of the bid, the medical cannabis produced will be sold to Luxembourg's Division de la Pharmacies de la Medicans, uh, representing the second time the company has received an order directly from the Re Luxembourg government. While the initial bid quantities are small, the award confirms Aurora's position as a trusted and preferred supplier to international jurisdictions and reflects the company's ability to work with local governments and regulators in complex restricted markets. Uh, so why is that important? Obviously, Aurora has been working pretty heavily with the EU and the fact that they're getting the second shipment to Luxembourg is an important milestone for them or any company that's trying to focus on the EU. Getting trust as a supplier there and a guarantee of government contracts is going to be important moving forward, especially in the German and EU market. Uh, so next, looking at Alternate Health Corporation, an international leader in technology and extraction solutions for the regulated cannabis industry, who announced today a key step forward in the company's pharmaceutical-grade CBD product manufacturing strategy, having signed a joint venture agreement with Ultiquet Enterprises, a Kafepris licensed Mexican CBD distributor with an eye for expansion throughout Latin America. Uh, so Alternate Health's expansion to the Latin American CBD market complements the company's recent $20 million acquisition of Blame Labs, previously announced on May 5th. Uh, with 23 year, three years of experience producing FDA-approved and GMP-certified medical products, Blaine Labs is uniquely positioned, positioned to manufacture a wide range of CBD products that meet international export standards. As Alternate Health rapidly expands Blaine Labs' CBD product line, the company expects Mexico to be a key growth market for future sales and a jumping-off point for further distribution throughout Latin America. Uh, so why is this important? I've mentioned Latin America before, mainly with... Uh, Chiron Life Sciences, but again, there are other companies looking into getting into the space. A uh, few companies that are focusing very directly on Mexico as their sort of entranceway to the Latin American market. We still haven't seen what the actual regulations are going to be surrounding the Mexican CBD market or the C THC market. So that's still something we're going to be waiting on for later this year. But companies that are setting up this these distribution or marketing agreements early on will definitely have first mover advantage and I can see this being uh, something later on but again we're still waiting to see what the actual changes are for most Latin American countries uh, right now Colombia and sort of further south uh, Latin American countries are the only ones that have really established uh, a strong CBD and THC regulation the rest of them are still sort of in limbo uh, so next looking at THC Biomed International Limited who reported that it's entered into an agreement with the BC Liquor Distribution Branch, or the BCLDB, to supply a number of its products exclusively to British Columbia. Uh, the agreement was entered into after the BC Liquor Distribution Branch met with THC Biomed Management and toured THC's flagship facility in Kelowna, BC. So what does this mean for THC Biomed? They'll be supplying all the produced dried flower products intended for the non-medical market exclusively to the BCLDB until December of 2019 and supplying the product as per the quantities and schedule listed in the appendix to the agreement. 
Uh, THC Biomed has agreed to exclusively supply the BCLDB with several flower strains in 3.5 gram and 7 gram formats until December. We are proud that our products will be featured in our home province of BC and we continue to strive to produce cannabis products that are pure, clean, and potent. We also look forward to launching THC KISS, a pure organically produced cannabis beverage when regulations permit, commented John Miller, CEO and President of THC Biomed. So why is this important? Uh, THC has this exclusive agreement with BC. Again, see a bunch of different companies gaining exclusive distribution agreements with different provinces throughout Canada. So they're no exception to this. They are part of the rule, but it's interesting to see that they have established this sense in BC and also that they're focusing on a beverage program for later in this year. Uh, THC Biomed, again, not the only company looking at making a beverage program for October, but definitely someone to look out for as they have this exclusive agreement with BC, which could be their advantage for at least the BC market moving forward. That's all for today's podcast. Enjoy your Thursday. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.